championship debuts to four players, Dominic Clark, Kieran McGinney, Mark McNeil in defence, and Barry McCabe in attack. Plenty of experience in the side, however, with calibre players like Mark McQuillan, Neil Smith, Ger Houlihan, Kieran McGurk, and Jim McConville. They've all been through the mill before. All-Ireland champions down, line out with the 15 men that brought Sam Maguire and Glory back to the Moran County. No place for Liam Austin, as Barry Breen and Eamon Burns continue their midfield partnership, while the attack, boasting probably the best six in the country, are all back in their familiar positions. Referee Damien Campbell from County Fermanagh throws up a match that everybody has been looking forward to here in the province of Ulster. All-Ireland champions down, defending their title against their arch enemies and rivals, Armagh. The athletic grounds packed to capacity on a wonderful summer's afternoon. It's really what the championship is about, and hopefully we have a sparkling game of football ahead of us. And no doubt the main tactic by Armagh, who've already switched their side around substantially, will be to hold down for the first 20 minutes or so. And I'm sure Colm O'Rourke will agree. Yes. Armagh would need to get a good start down with more experience and probably a lot better individual players but Armagh have immediately started by shifting their whole forward line around some of the down players have stuck with their original men uh, Jim McConville is the smallest man on the field is playing full forward at the moment and the down full back Dominic Clark and Garrett O'Neill at centre half have both switched so there's a lot of changes in the Armagh team already sending in that ball is Mark Grimley sending it across to Cahal O'Rourke from Drummond T, and he opens the scoring after 70 seconds of play at the Athletic Grounds. And that's exactly the sort of start that our man needed. Quick free in into open space, Cahal O'Rourke coming out and turning on to his left foot for a fairly easy point. One of the few Armagh forwards who's actually playing in his original position. remember the night that Down won the All-Ireland final last September and when the celebrations died down the first thing they were thinking about my god we have to defend our title the first match against Armagh and here it is going back to gather it is Mark McNeil a very inexperienced Armagh side but full of heart and determination but they will have to watch giving away silly frees such as that one Gary Mason is usually fairly accurate from that side of the field. Mason was a doubtful starter, has knee ligaments trouble during the week. He was past fit after a training session on Friday. First attempt to the Ulster Championship for Gary Mason. And it goes beautifully over the bar on the side to level after two and a half minutes of play. You better hold on to it in championship football because you don't get a second chance. Good play by Mark McNeil. Knocking it down to McQuillan again. James McCartan chasing after him. McQuillan sending it in. Knocked away. Comes back outside. To centre half forward. Ger Houlihan from the Pierce Old Club here at the Athletic Grounds. And Houlihan gets his first point of the 1992 Ulster Championship. Very good work there by John Rafferty to get that ball away from James McCartan initially. And when it comes up to Jared Houlihan, who has now moved into the right corner from centre forward, and that's his strongest point off his left foot coming from in from the right hand side, and a very, very good point from play. Down towards James McCartan, getting there ahead of John Rafferty, sending it in towards Mickey Linden. Mark McNeil staying with him, and Mark McNeil accused of fouling Mickey Linden. And a free in for down. <laughs> so Gary Mason from Lachlan Island taking the free. Already has had one attempt going for point number two. level once again there's a great ball in there by uh, James McCartan into Mickey Linton which set up that free 
and uh, even though Mark McNeil was with Mickey Linden, he put his arms around him and fouled him, and if the Armagh backs are going to do that, they're going to give away a lot of easy freezes, just as they have done just there. Paddy oh, O'Rourke knocking it down for Gary Mason. Ball deep into Armagh territory. Mickey Linden coming across. Peter Whitnell. And once again, Armagh guilty of fouling the down man. And this is where down have the edge at the moment because when the ball goes into the full forward line, the Armagh backs intending to foul. To Gary Mason. Attempt number three. And successful for the third time as well. Gary Mason, three points down, three points. Well, Armagh can't afford to do this. They're committing suicide at the moment, ha playing very well in other parts of the field, but their back's giving away really soft frees, especially as they had the forward out the field and there was no big need to foul. It would be a different thing if a fellow was going straight through with a goal at his mercy, but on these occasions, the back was inside the forward. Great tussle going on between uh, Barry Breen and Neil Smith. And this is going to be given to Armagh. Coming out to take it is Kieran McGurk, the Armagh captain. Although you can't see it in vision as such, the running off the ball by the Armagh forwards, very much to be complimented. The ball should be sent in a little bit quicker. It's a slow build-up. This is Martin McQuillan. It's a poor ball into Houlihan, which DJ Kane deals with confidently. And all the running off the ball by Armagh is of absolutely no use whatsoever, unless the ball is sent in quickly. And from a position of possession for Armagh, they now find themselves under pressure. McCartan getting inside. John Rafferty still James McCartan cutting straight across and there's nobody over this side except Martin McQuillan coming clear and coming out of defence and Armagh playing a nice brand of football but it's from here on that they run into a little bit of trouble because of their slowness and delivery let's see what uh, Kieran McGurk can do up towards Carl O'Rourke from Drummond T. Given a free, which I think was a little bit questionable. Yes, it's a fairly simple free there for Armagh, but Armagh players are all carrying the ball, whereas Down are kicking it from midfield. Uh, Armagh tactics are very questionable. Their uh, forwards are running all over the place, and the ball then has been held up around the middle by players who are all soloing. So the referee just telling Cahill O'Rourke to take the free. Tails into the right and a marvellous leap by Mark Grimley. Comes down to Martin Toy, but is tailing, kept in by Jim McConville almost. Goes out over the line. Armagh would need to be taking all these opportunities. It seems as if Down have a big advantage in close in free kicks. Uh, Mason is much better than Cahill O'Rourke if it's... Uh, if we're going to take that as a sign of his free-taking ability. That ball, that long ball, sent up towards Peter Whitnell. Went back to gather it, it's Gareth O'Neill. It was fouled by Whitnell. The break. Balls to Armagh. Mark Grimley giving it to Jared Houlihan. Trying to get inside DJ Kane. Still Hulan. And a foul by Ross Carr. And again, a rather harsh decision, I would say, because Ross Carr very much was going for the ball on that occasion. Yes, there's no doubt about the uh, down players went in to play the ball on Jared Hulan on that occasion. And uh, the big problem for our man at the moment is they're playing a lot of football out the field. Here in this case, uh, Jared Hulan has the ball. And uh, very questionable whether that is a free. but. Armagh playing a lot of ball and having a lot of opportunities, but Down are playing much more sensible football, getting the ball in and getting easy scores. 
with a free taken by Barry McCabe equalizes the match at three points each. And that's after 22 minutes in the first half. Yes, that's the third arm uh, free taker we have had in the first 20 minutes of the game. So maybe Barry McCabe, now that he's, he has hit the target, will be left taking the rest of the frees. Same with Burns. To Mickey Linden. Trying to get inside Mark McNeil. Linden aimed at James McCartan. McCartan rounding very well and taking a shot which goes to the left and wide. Referee has disagreed, I think, with his umpire. Mickey like Linden getting inside his man relative ease and gives it in a great ball into McCartan. He's able to turn and get around his man. Going for a goal and the ball deflected out for a 50. But again, the down forward, most of them in the inside line, being able to get the ball and turn and beat their men. Gary Mason with this 45. He really has been hitting these frees superbly. His second 45 attempt. The first one went over at the bar. The second one goes into the crowd and harmlessly wide. First miss for Gary Mason there, and if he had been playing with Armagh with the form he was in earlier, Armagh would have at least three or four more points, and that has been the difference. Down picking up the easy points for Armagh seems to be finding it very difficult to get any sort of a score. Now got two minutes of injury time played in this first half. A long, probing ball, a dangerous ball. Oh, superbly gathered. Oh, what a goal! An absolute pinch of a goal. Copybook stuff written. Finished by one James McCartan. Well, John Kelly kicks it in here high. Again, down, not too fussy about the way that they're to get this ball. And caught, caught in sight by James McCartan. And when he turns, best player in the business to turn and shoot gives Brendan Tierney no chance whatsoever with that from about 10 yards out. Well, that is a tremendous start and a boost rather as we go into half time surely it's exactly what Down wanted and equally exactly what Armad didn't want but I must say we've been saying it all along that the full forward line that Down have have been threatening all the time yes that goal has been coming for a while because uh, that inside line of Downs have all been turning their men and getting inside and McCartan had a chance earlier which was just deflected out for a 50 and uh, the down full or the Armagh full back line are all having severe problems with this down attack. So at the other end, a free for Armagh. Hit by Carl O'Rourke and sent to the left and wide. And that really sums up the story of the first half. Missed opportunities by Armagh deadly finishing by down and the referee blows the halftime whistle a most interesting first half with some fine individual displays and as Damien Campbell goes off at halftime down lead on a scoreline of 1-5 to Armagh's starts the second half with Armagh I'm sure going to be given the instructions to let the ball in a lot quicker to their forwards to people like Jim McConville who can get a free after just 12 seconds of play in the second half. The general consensus at half time here at the Athletic Grounds is that Armagh have to play it a lot quicker into their forward line. Be a little bit more efficient when in possession. So Kieran McGurk, the Sarsfields club in the county of Armagh and the captain of this Armagh side taking the first three of the second half. And he puts it over and reduces down Armagh's Downs lead rather to four points. One five now for Down, four points for Armagh. Kieran McGurk taking responsibility for kicking that free. What Armagh need is someone to take on the responsibility and stick with it even if they miss one. Ross Carr sending it up to James McCartan. Gone inside is Whitnell and that's some of the bar. Really, this full forward line 
They've recharged the batteries over the winter season and they're back on full power. Again, a, a simple ball in from Ro Ross Carr for James McCartan to run onto, as always in front of his man. And Whitnell today has been very impressive and very sharp. Tony McKernan fully restored to health. Put under pressure, but he gets it out. It's a line ball for down. Well, so up our mass line to uh, put a bit of physique into the forward line moving in Neil Smith and uh, something that's been needed badly, but at the moment they're totally disorganized. Mickey Lendon looking for support. DJ Kane coming from the left half back position. That's a great run inside. It must be a goal and a brilliant block down. And Brendan Tierney, a marvelous save by the Armagh custodian. It had goal written all over it. But a brilliant save by Tierney from Gary Mason. Now, can that inspire the Orchard County? Neil Smith. Falling outside is Damien Horisk. This is Horisk going through for goal. Oh, off the crossbar. Now, that's unlucky. Here come Arma again. This is Gareth O'Neill sending it over the bar. It's a little consolation, but suddenly Arma could be inspired by Brendan Tierney at the other end. Break falls for Greg Blaney. And that's going to be a hot ball. So with 20 minutes gone in the second half, Armagh very much need a goal. Jared Houlihan pumping a long ball up towards Barry McCabe. Neil Collins coming out to gather it, but McCabe got the fist to it. And a window over the bar. And that's twice, really, Armagh have been unlucky. McCabe beat Neil Collins to it, but it went over. Well, since our man changed their tactic and starting to play the ball in longer, they've got two goal chances. Barry McCabe there, a bit unfortunate. Neil Collins should have come out and took that ball earlier, but when he hesitated to give McCabe the chance, and very unfortunate not to put it into the net. And McCabe waiting for the ball to land into his arms. Give it to Ross Carr, who's taking up a roving commission. Mark McNeil. The poor ball out of defence. Liam Austin. Gary Mason. Ball into space where Mickey Linden is there. Taking on Mark McNeil. Still Linden bursting his way through. Oh, what a magnificent goal! Mickey Linden, however, must seem to have taken too many steps, I think. Because yes, I think that's a, that's a good decision by the referee. Uh, Mickey Linden definitely took too many steps, and even though it was a brilliant goal, the referee and had already blown. So from being under pressure at one end, Arma exert the pressure at the other end. Ross Carr. Almost misjudged. Comes to Mickey Linden. Greg Blaney calling inside. He sends it straight over the bar. That's really the difference between winning and losing. It's when the chances come. The 11th commandment now must take the chance. And that's exactly what Greg Blaney did. I suppose Mark McNeil, a little bit unfortunate there that he didn't win that ball. But at this stage, too, the down forward seem to have an edge in fitness over their Ma backs because they're going much better than their counterparts who are marking them. Gareth O'Neill sending it in towards Conor Deegan. DJ Kane. James McCartan, the down forwards, each in turn taking up a roving commission. Greg Blaney, Mickey Linden looking for the long one. And there's Linden taking on Mark McNeil. Coming through is Liam Austin, unable to hold on to it. But it comes to Gary Mason, and that's an easy point. Eight points for Gary Mason. At this stage, the down powers are completely overrunning their, their are mad backs, and uh, Mickey Linden, probably the main man in that regard. Liam Austin fumbling, being able to poke it on to Gary Mason, and again, plenty of time to kick it over the bar. Neil Smith trying to engineer something special, as we now have 35 minutes played. Now the 
O'Neill, sending it in. Plenty of down players there. One of them is DJ Kane. Under a lot of pressure, manages to get it past Liam Austin. Well, a silly ball by Liam Austin, which puts his team under pressure once again. And this is the last opportunity, surely, for Armagh. But time totally against them. Kieran McGurk to take this free. They lost last year by two points. And incredibly, he sends it wide. And it sums up Armagh's day at the, at the athletic grounds. A little piece of magic in the first half by James McCartan, which will surely please his manager, Peter McGrath, which has really made the difference between these teams. Down introduce Kieran Smith as Gary Mason goes off. And Greg Blaney starts the process once again. This time Liam Austin finding Mickey Linden. Greg Blaney again. Last charge, surely in this match for the All-Ireland Champions. Liam Austin is free inside. Eamon Burns slow on the delivery. Goes it alone. A little bit of selfishness on his part, really. But it's all immaterial. The referee blows the final whistle on a day when down the Ulster and All-Ireland champions show the way forward on an impressive display. The final score down 112, Armagh nine points. Well, Peter, I'm sure you're glad that this one in particular is over. Absolutely. It was always going to be a difficult one, given the fact that we had to come to Armagh, the fact that they are, you know, obviously are very, very old rivals, and their record here in Championship is very, very, uh, you know, very strong. So we realised the task facing us here today, but we prepared well physically and mentally, and I knew during the week that our players were in the right frame of mind, and uh, on the day we got the job done. Well, I haven't got the skills to pussyfoot myself around in there. I have to use my strengths, and my strengths are go straight, and that particular instance it worked. It didn't work on a few other occasions when possibly I should have looked up and found somebody, but on that occasion things went well. Now the semi-final is going to bring you up against Derry or Monaghan. How do you view that? Uh, people are, are writing Monaghan off. I think Monaghan are almost a forgotten team in this championship. And Derry have to travel to Castle Blaney, and that won't be easy. But whoever it is, we look at it, and that's an all-a-day's work. But it's, I have no real preference because it's something that is beyond anything I can do. We just have to wait and see. Down then, safely over the first hurdle in their All-Ireland title defence. And now they face the winner of the derry Monaghan match on June 28th. Well, now, just a little while ago, we heard the voice of Colm O'Rourke in his match comments. Well, as soon as that game finished, Colm was out of Armagh nearly as quick as me. They were out of the championship, and he joins us in studio right now. Colm, you're very welcome, despite that introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Six points the difference in the end. Might have been more. Were down worth it? Were they worth more? Yes, down were a class above Armagh today, even though I suppose uh, one should say that in the first half, Armagh played quite well, but uh, didn't get the scores maybe their play deserved because of the poo poor free-taking on their part. But down moved very well their forwards were very aggressive and very hungry and they could have ended up winning the game by another six or nine points because brendan tierney made a few superb saves during the second half for armagh which kept the scoreline down going into this game a lot of people thought that armagh might win it there didn't seem to be too much evidence of that on their second half display anyway no down were much the better team uh, they had a game plan which was really simple they got the ball into their full forward line they got it in quickly and a lot of the time they weren't particularly fussy how they got it in there and when it did come in most of the men inside were able to win possession in a 50-50 situation and every time they did that there was panic in the Armagh backline. Also Armagh seemed to change their team around a lot, there seemed to be a lot of switching and moving going on. Yes at the start their entire forward line seemed to change and some of the down players stuck with the amend originally on, some others just went on the man in their particular position. They switched also their uh, centre half and full back, Gareth O'Neill and Dominic Clark. But I think overall the switches didn't have that much of an effect because the down back line after the first 20 minutes were in total control. And uh, I suppose John Kelly had probably one of his better matches there for a long time. 
I suppose if you were to pick out one killer blow for Armagh in this game, it was that goal that came just at the wrong time for them, just before half time. Very nicely taken score though. It was a great goal by a very small man. Again, the ball driven in, James McCartan, been very brave in going for it. But uh, as soon as he landed, he's probably the best player in football to be able to turn and shoot quickly. And uh, he, he put it away very well. And that was uh, typical of the way down played their football. They were willing to just get the ball in. Uh, it wasn't a particularly good ball for a forward, that one. But uh, McCartan, as always, is willing to go for any ball, whether it comes in high or low. And when he gets it, and uh, he no makes no mistake there from about 10 yards to give Brendan Tierney absolutely no chance. And Brendan Tierney had made a few very, mm -hmm. very good saves, so he wasn't too easy to beat. Yeah. One thing that struck me from just watching the highlights of the game tonight is that Armagh seemed to concede an awful lot of silly frees. You mentioned it yourself in the commentary. They were giving away an awful lot of very, very scorable frees. Yes, that was one of the principal differences between the two teams because uh, Down had a very good free taker in, in Gary Mason. I think he only missed one. And uh, the Armagh backs, time and time again, conceded the easy frees when there was no obvious danger. A lot of the time they had uh, the forward outside the back and there was no real need here in particular, uh, Gareth O'Neill, Peter Whitman. Now that's a very silly free by any back. And there was very poor discipline in marking by the uh, Armagh back line during the whole match. Uh, the down backs gave away quite a few frees as well, but they could afford it because uh, down Armagh weren't able to kick them. And here we have examples of that. Uh, the Armagh forward line switched their free taker on three or four occasions. Mm -hmm. Some of the tackling, as we can see there, was fairly wild, uh, particularly high tackled by Neil Smith and Barry Breen. Uh, Neil Smith had been the victim of a few earlier himself and was probably getting a little bit of his own back. But the Armagh tackling, was very poor from start to finish and they paid the ultimate price for it because they handed uh, Gary Mason eight points from freeze. Even though I suppose one should add that uh, some of the frees that he got were really superb efforts from quite a long way out. Yes, as you said, he was getting an awful lot of handy ones in and out around the goalmouth, but uh, it's the mark of a, of a very good free taker that when he's presented with a big challenge from outfield, he was slotting those over very, very competently as well. Yes, and uh, the style of play that Down adopted left it that every time a down forward got the ball, Armagh backs were faced with a one-to-one -one situation. Armagh had a much slower build-up and uh, the down backs were able to funnel back and they hadn't nearly the same difficulties. They were never left isolated. So uh, the style of play of both teams was very interesting. Down have a very straightforward style of play where uh, as Armagh held onto the ball much, much too, much too much and they soloed when they should have been kicking. I suppose from an Armagh point of view, as they will look back at this game, they hardly will complain at their defeat. But still, there were a few chances during that game that, well, another day they might have gone in for them and might have gone over for them. Well, if they had to take their few uh, relatively easy frees the first half, they would have been well in the hunt at half time. And uh, it must have been very frustrating for uh, some members of their team, Neil Smith, for example, and Brendan Tierney and Kieran McGurk, who tried very hard and then to see this going on, but uh, the organisation of the free-taking uh, left a lot to be desired sure. as well because they switched their free-taker regularly. A good team should have one person to take frees, or one from each side, one left-footed, one right-footed, and stick with them. But as soon as an Armagh ma man missed a free, somebody else took over, and then somebody else took over, so poor organisation there. Let's look at down on the strength of this win. All-Ireland champions, obviously they're going all out to retain that title. Good enough this year to retain that Ulster title for, for a start off? Well, if one looks at down now and down this time last year, uh, they are a much better team now. There's no doubt about that because in the corresponding match last year, they beat Armagh by a point and were, I think, uh, quite fortunate to do so. Uh, at times today, down looked a very classy outfit. They moved the ball very fast. When they got it up front, they were able to cut holes through their Armagh back line. And I think that they're going to be very, very difficult to beat. If I was picking a team to play with now, I wouldn't mind playing with that down sure. forward line because they, they look very impressive. And uh, I think Peter Whitnell at full forward seems to have improved quite a lot from last year. And his two corner men, well, they're probably the best around. Right, Colin, your last task. Man of the match from this one. Telecom Aaron, man of the match. Who did you select? Well, today it was particularly difficult because a lot of down players played very well. And I think that... Uh, John Kelly had one of his better games and uh, Greg Blaney gives in a lot of very high quality ball to the inside men in the attack and Peter Whitnell and James McCartan were both very dangerous but the man... Remember we had the winners of Waterford and Limerick and uh, that's before us for the month of final 
So we're not many were carried away, but I mean, uh, to be simplistic.